This is uh, 8 2 day 3. Students will be able to determine indeterminate forms and solve limits using L'Hopital's rule. Uh, use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit below. Write L'Hopital's every time you use the rule. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of all this stuff. 3 to the 0 is 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. And then we have minus 0, minus 1, because we're plugging 0 into all this. And natural law, let's see, 3 to the 0 is 1 minus 1. That's how you get 0 over 0. Well, now we're just taking the derivative of all this. The derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x natural log of 3. We have 1 over x plus 1. Derivative is negative 2. 2x two minus 4, there's derivative. When we plug 0 in here, we get negative 4 in the denominator. Uh, 3 to the 0 is 1. Natural log of 3 minus 1 minus 2. So minus 1 minus 2, there's your negative 3, and 3 to the 0 is 1. Uh, tangent of 0 is 0. 0 plus sine of 0 is 0. So we got secant squared over 1 plus cosine. Secant of 0 is 1, and cosine of 0 is 1. So you get 2 in the denominator there. Uh, if we plug 1 in, integral from 1 to 1 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So we're going to do L'Hopital's. Derivative of this is 3x minus 4. Derivative here is 2x, so we get negative 1 half. Over here, we're going to let f of x equal the function. Take the natural log, bring the x down. Instead of multiplying by x, we'll divide by 1 over x. And then, uh, let's see. The derivative of natural log is 1 over this, which is really just x to the third. But uh, we can write it as 1 over 1 over x to the third. I mean, we're going to get the same thing anyway. Then x to the fourth over x to the third, that's just x. So we get negative 3 over x. And then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is multiplied by x squared over 1. So one of those x's cancel out. You're just left with 3x. So 3x equals 0. Now we dealt with the right-hand side. We've got to deal with the left-hand side. And so, uh, yeah, it just ends up being e to the 0 because you get the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the natural log of f of x equals e to the 0. Well, those cancel out. You're left with e to the 0, which is 1. Let f of x equal the function. Take the natural log. That brings the power down. Take the limit, but instead of multiplying by 2x, we're going to divide. We're going to, we're going to divide by 1 over 2x. We'll use L'Hopital's because we have that indeterminate form. Oh, I didn't write that, which is uh, 1 to infinity. There's the indeterminate form. Uh, take derivatives. And the derivative of the bottom here, that's 1 half x to the negative 1. So we have negative 1 half x to the negative 2. So that's why it's negative 1 over 2x squared. There's the derivative. Uh, the, the negative 1 over x squared is cancel, and then we can multiply by the reciprocal of 1 half. So we're multiplying by 2 there. And when we plug infinity, we just get uh, 2 because that piece will be 0 right there. So we end up with e squared. Let f of x equal the function, take the natural log. We bring the 1 over 1 minus x down. Well, now we kind of have that natural fraction created. Throw in the limit. Take the derivative. The derivative, there's 1 over x. That's negative 1. So it ends up being negative 1 over x. But when we plug 1 in, we just get negative 1, e to the negative 1, which can be written as 1 over e. Here we have a little infinity over a much bigger infinity, so we get 0. Use four subintervals of equal width to find the right Riemann sum approximation. Uh, so we don't start with 4 to the 0, we start with 4 to the 1 half because we're using right Riemann sum and not left Riemann sum. So the answer ends up 15. The integral from 2 to 2 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0. The derivative is sine of x, and the derivative of the bottom is 2x. And then when we plug 2 in, we get sine of 2 over 4. The graph of the absolute value of x over x is anything 
bigger than zero, you're going to have five over five, six over six, seven over seven. Uh, that's going to be one on the right side, on the positive side. But on the negative side, you'll end up dividing by like absolute value of negative two over negative two. That's negative one. Same thing to the left is negative one. So the limit as x approaches zero from the left is negative one. Zero from the right is positive one. Oh, here we have uh, infinity over infinity. Derivative of third root of x is one-third x to the negative two-thirds. That gets sent down the bottom, so when we plug infinity in, we get zero. This is uh, really, this is ending behavior, so that should be, oh, oh, oh no, but it's two, not ending behavior, because it's two, excuse me. When we plug in two, we get four minus eight plus four. Well, that's zero over zero. So we take the derivative, that's zero over zero, Take the derivative again, we get 2 over 6x, that's 2 over 12, that's 1 sixth. Cosecant of pi is uh, infinity, and cotangent of pi is negative infinity. So there's your indeterminate form. Take the derivative, cancel out the cosecants, turn everything into sines and cosines, multiply by sine, and you just get cosine, cosine of pi is negative 1. Oh, secant. As it goes to pi over 2 is infinity. Tangent is also infinity. There's the tangent. Take derivatives, cancel the secants, turn everything to sine and cosine, multiply by cosine instead of divide by 1 over cosine. You end up with sine. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Show that the derivative is 1 plus 3x plus 9x. So we have the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 3y is 3, but then dy dx. We put dy dx in for that, distribute, and we get what they wanted. Is there a min, max, or neither at the point 3, negative 1? So if we evaluate the first derivative at 3, negative 1, we get 0, which means there's a potential minimum or maximum. If we evaluate the second derivative at 3, negative 1, we find out that it's 1, which is greater than 0, which means the graph is concave up there, and if you have a concave up graph, then you must have a minimum value there. So that's the second derivative test for minimums and maximums. Here, if f of 1 is equals 2, approximate f of 2 with two equal steps using Euler's method. So we start with the point 1, 2, then we have 1, uh, 3 halves, and 4 halves. And that's how you get to 2. So x is increasing by a half. So if we split the differentials, if we multiply dx over, we get x plus 3y times dx. Well, if you plug 1, 2 in there, 1 plus 6, that's 7, times a half is 7 halves. Well, we're going to add 7 halves to that x. 4 halves plus 7 halves is 11 halves. Now we repeat the process. x plus uh, 3y is 30, you know, there's 33 halves. That's 36 halves, but then times a half is 36 fourths, which is 18 halves. So 18 plus 11 is 29 halves.